up the old heart. Warm up to the power project. Ah, there we go. This is the power project, Jack. I'm jacked and I'm stacked and I'm ready to wrap. I'll say something crazy. I don't even care. I'm the people's coach. I'm the meathead millionaire. I'm gonna hit up some benches. I'm gonna hit up some Fran. I'm jacked and tan. I got the master plan. I'm gonna post these selfies on Instagram. This is Mark Bell from supertraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. This project is brought to you by me because I'm rich and the video's for free. Anyway, uh, we got some things to talk about here today. First off, we gotta talk about this wonderful hat that I got from my boy, Gerard. Thank you, Gerard. Appreciate it. Anybody else wanna send me something cool? That'd be awesome. Anyway, so let's get to uh, the first question is about benching. How much you bench is always the question that you're asked, right? And when you're asked that question, you don't wanna say, eh, you know, 225 off a board. You don't want to say some pussy bullshit like that. You want to be able to look the son of a bitch in the eye and tell them that you bench over 400 pounds, right? At the very least. Uh, this question is about losing weight and trying to find new positions. A guy asked the question of, uh, should you change the way that you bench press when you lose weight? And I'll answer it in a more broad way. Uh, should you change the way that you lift when you lose weight, period? on a squat, on a bench, on a deadlift, on an overhead press, on a clean, on a snatch, any of those movements? The answer is yes, you're gonna have to make a lot of changes. Um, your body and your, uh, your power lifting, your fitness levels, your goals are ever evolving and they always should be. You should always be progressing, you should always be um, trying to shoot for new goals, setting new records and stuff like that. So. When you lose weight, you know, they talk about people tucking their elbows in the bench press. We'll use the bench press as an example. Uh, as you lose weight, you're gonna find that you don't have all the stuff underneath you anymore to lift the way that you did before. So when I was 330 and I would drop a weight down and just reverse the weight back up real quickly and press it, press it like a soul bitch, um, I had more stuff underneath me. I had more body weight underneath me. And it was easier for me to tuck my elbows in because my elbows didn't really go in very far anyway. However, when you lose weight and you go to tuck your elbows in, you might end up in that alternative lifestyle pterodactyl position at the bottom. You might look, end up looking like a fairy down there. Elbows in and the wrist cocked back, cocked back. And that's not a very good position to try to press from. It's gonna be awkward, the weight's gonna to wanna to fly out of your face. And you're not gonna be in a good groove, as people always say. So what we're trying to do as we lose weight is we're trying to keep uh, a similar style, but the style's gonna to have to change, especially when you lose 20, 30, 40 pounds. If you're going from being a real big fat mofo to being a less big fat mofo, uh, you're gonna to have to make some drastic changes. And what I would suggest is that you don't rely on any tricks in your training. And what I mean by that, when you become big or you become a competitive power lifter and you're someone who steps on a platform, a competitive power lifter might take a squat stance like this way out here. And they might perform a squat from this position. One of the reasons why some of the power lifters back in the day in the 70s would squat this wide was to almost try to create a suit for themselves. And it was a way of kind of cheating the squat. To break parallel, they'd need five, six, sometimes 700 pounds just to squish them down that far. So in your training, in your efforts, losing weight and trying to maintain your strength, uh, you're gonna have to not rely on any of those tricks anymore. In the squat, bring your stance in. Make sure you're going well below parallel. Uh, maybe switch things up a little bit and try some things that you haven't done before, such as a box squat or a front squat. Try to mix some things up a little bit. Add a band, add a chain. Why do you wanna do that? For this right here, so you don't go crazy because your new numbers are gonna suck and you're gonna hate them and you're not gonna be able to deal with them. So trick yourself a little bit. When you go to do a bench press, don't do a regular bench press. Grab a fat bar, grab a squat bar, throw some bands on there, throw some chains on there. Why? Because you don't know how much weight you have on the bar anymore. And that's actually healthy for you to do sometimes. Also, every once in a while, throw yourself an underhand pitch and hit that sewn bitch out the park. Give yourself something easy that you know that you're already good at. Could be dumbbell presses, could be overhead presses, whatever it is that you're good at. Uh, rely on some of those movements here and there to keep your spirits up, keep your self-esteem going. 
Um, but yes, you're going to have to change uh, the way that you bench press um, as you lose weight. You're going to have to change the way that you squat, change the way that you deadlift. Stan Efforting uh, with an 837 pound deadlift um, and a 2303 total in a 275 pound weight class, all time biggest total in the history of powerlifting at the time, broken by Eric Lillibridge. Stan Efforting uh, would use a much closer stance for a long time. As he got bigger and bigger and bigger and more jacked, got himself up to about 290. He'd weigh in at 275, compete at around 290 pounds. He kind of had this distended belly thing going, right? He'd wear his powerlifting belt kind of high up on the biggest part of his belly. He'd have that belt resting way up here. And now it was kind of hard for him to get in position with his feet close. So what did he do? He widened his stance out. And you see when he hits that 837 pound deadlift, which is absolutely amazing and awesome to watch. He also hit a 606 bench in that meet. Uh, but it's just, a, it's just an awesome deadlift. It's an awesome feat of strength, and it got him the total he was looking for, going over 2,300 pounds. The first guy under 300 pounds to ever go over that 2,300 pounds raw. He's got that wide stance way out here, and he's able to create some different leverages for himself. Strongman guys, the guys that are real tall, guys that are you know 6'8", almost 400 pounds, uh, guys like Robert Oberst, um, Guys like that, are they got that real wide stance when they're deadlifting. Why? Because that's the best leverage for them. As you lose weight or as you gain weight, you're gonna have to make changes. For you, you might have to bring your stance in. Maybe you have to even switch to sumo. Maybe on your bench press, you might have to start going with a closer grip. I don't know the exact answer for you, but you're gonna have to work on it yourself. And that is it from supertraining.tv.